So Samsung in 2017, specifically at IFA, had some very strong words for their belief on OLED and how they feel about re-entering the OLED market anytime soon. Now, this is going to be something that a lot of people have forgotten and when they make these articles speculating are probably not going to mention, but I'll be the only person mentioning Samsung's direct response, their formal, their official confirmation on what they feel about OLED technology. So let's get into it and run that clip. You may be wondering if Samsung will be re-entering the OLED market anytime soon. We want to reaffirm our commitment to QLED technology. Why? Because QLED is free of burning issues and cost effectively scales to larger screens. Nani? We believe QLED is the TV technology of the future. As you guys can see, Samsung definitely not believing in OLED technology. Like, I mean, you couldn't have a stronger statement. Why? Because QLED is burn-in free. We believe QLED is the future of TV. I mean, like, that, you don't get any more concise, right, as a company with your direction. And then investing $11 billion into quantum dot technology, this very well might not be a quantum dot OLED. This could be a micro LED that, you know, maybe they found a way to shrink down micro LED and make it, you know, viable for people in 2021. Maybe they found a way to make mini LED way better than anyone else. And maybe that's their direction. Or maybe all the speculation and rumors are true and they're coming out with a quantum OLED. You see, either way, if they come out with a quantum OLED, there's some things they're gonna have to do to avoid the death of it out the gate. The first thing is make sure it has zero burn-in potential. Because they were so strong against LG for burn-in, it wouldn't look very good on the company if they then produced an OLED that has the same risk. So they're gonna need to figure something out. Otherwise, people are just going to completely write them off, even with quantum dots, and just buy something else until those really expensive quantum dot OLED displays become affordable, which would be well into 2030, I would imagine. Just saying, things like top-end OLEDs that have quantum dots don't sound like they would run any kind of affordable for the average person like you or I, you know, and that's the thing that Samsung is really going to be struggling with. Now, when we talk about the other things that Samsung would have to do so they can afford the death of quantum OLED displays out the gate, well, that's going to have to come down to make sure that those things are affordable. Because if your average consumer can't get their hands on it, it's kind of a moot point, isn't it? I mean, yes, the high-end market is huge. There are a lot of people with a lot of money, but you know, they do represent a very small portion of TV electronic sales. And the most amount of money will still come in from the lower end LED sector to the mid range, because people just don't have more than about $1,500 to two grand, probably tops for some people, but that's on the lesser common side. People usually have to save up for that, you know, to get themselves a really solid TV. And more often than not, in my experience, people are really drawing the line at that $1,500, $1,600 price point, and I don't blame them. So to avoid the death of their quantum OLED display, if that's in fact what they're making, they would have to make sure that things are cost effective. Maybe that's why we won't see this until 2021, or maybe that's why we won't see it until a uh, deadline by 2025. But regardless, it definitely has some initial concerns and challenges to face. Now, there are other things you have to do to avoid the death of whatever type of quantum dot display that this is. Make sure that you're keeping an eye on those competitors because brands like Hisense and TCL are not backing down. I mean, just look at what happened with the Hisense H9F. I completely wrote it off when I got it in for review, fell in love with it and kept it because it outperformed literally every single TV I've seen up until this point. I mean, I'm talking the Q9FN, the Q8FN, the Q90R. I mean, the list goes on with quantum dot displays that it's destroyed, the Vizio P-Series Quantum X. I mean, the thing is an absolute monster. Now, it doesn't beat them in every category. I want to specify that. It is not a perfect TV. Far from it. But... When you're talking the cost to value ratio and the overall image quality on both displays, comparing that cost to value ratio fairly, the Hisense dominates in a way that I've never seen before. 
And of course, this has a lot to do with their picture processing and having that skin tone management along with other features. And it's great for calibrators like myself where basically the only limitation is your imagination. So if you could do that on your quantum dot OLED displays or your mini LEDs or QLEDs that you're likely still gonna be making at Samsung, you could, you could definitely avoid some unwanted slowdowns and some unwanted deaths of your products when they hit the shelves. Because again, these budget companies are pretty impressive and their price points are even more appealing for their flagship offerings. Now, that being said, I understand that luxury companies like the Prestige and they like to charge you for that as well, so they better make sure that they're doing things on the up and up. Let me explain. See, with their QLED series, as far as I'm concerned, it's taken a turn for the worse. It really has. I mean, just look at what happened with their new 2019 and even their last year's 2018 televisions. Your remote got pretty much scaled back to the point of you getting some cheap garbage plastic remote. And this year, I even ran into that on the Q90R where there wasn't this nice sleek metallic remote. Instead, you got some garbage, cheap plastic basic remote found on mid-range TVs to low-end TVs like not cool at all. So they're gonna make sure that, you know, they give you the absolute best of the best. And that's really like my big stickler here. Like you gotta be on your A game when you're talking about new technologies and, you know, entering the market and being very vague with pricing and not doing a press conference, holding an official release or an official unveiling or announcement of some sort of a specific technology to come and showing off a prototype or whatever, I feel as though you know, to avoid the death of these things, they're really, really gonna have to bring their A game when the time comes. I don't know, we could see this at CES 2020. That would be very exciting. I think that would be the time to show up and actually deliver something tangible that people can go off of versus all this speculation. And, oh, I read in Business Korea that they said this or somewhere else. I don't care much what an article says. I wanna see a confirmation and an official opening statement from the company because so far the only confirmation I have from Samsung is this one. We want to reaffirm our commitment to QLED technology. Why? Because QLED is free of burn-in issues and cost-effectively scales to larger screens. We believe QLED is the TV technology of the future.